We've only got one life in this world. Make the most of it. Welcome to Island Influencers, where we share stories of successful business owners, experienced professionals, entrepreneurs, and community leaders based or with influence in the Isle of Man. This podcast is brought to you by Thornton Chartered Financial Planners, because great financial planning has the power to change your life. Now here's your host, Sharon Sutton. Welcome to episode 106 of Island Influences. Join me as I chat with personal trainer Duin Chung, who, like me, is embracing a new platform and being interviewed on a podcast for the first time. Duin's story is deeply rooted in the Isle of Man, where he was born in Douglas. Growing up, his parents ran a successful local Chinese takeaway, instilling a solid work ethic and a sense of achievement in him. From his experiences in high school sports to navigating the financial industry, Duin's journey eventually led him to become a personal trainer, bodybuilder and entrepreneur. He finds immense joy in witnessing his clients achieve their fitness goals and embarking on transformative journeys like his own. Having a personal trainer like Duin has been indispensable to me. It's a stress reliever that keeps me committed to the gym three times a week, which is crucial for my own mental and physical well-being. Duin underscores the importance of perseverance and facing challenges head on, especially in the most difficult moments. Additionally, he offers insights into his upcoming endeavours, such as developing a fitness app and shares his invaluable seven rules for life. I hope episode 106 leaves you enriched and inspired. Well, welcome to Island Influencers, and I, I'm delighted that after months and probably years of persuading Ju and Chung, my personal trainer has decided that, yes, he'll do a podcast with me. So thanks very much, Ju and, for coming along to the Island Influencers studio for today and trying something that's new for both of us, you podcasting and me being videoed. So <laughs> First time, for first time. Yeah, outside of comfort zones. I think that's a theme of tra- training, really, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, so for the benefit of our listeners who wants to know what this master of torture, um, who he is and what, where, where, he, where he, what he's all about, I, I wonder if you'd mind, for the benefit of our listeners, telling uh, telling them who you are and where you come from. Well, uh, yeah, my name's June, and originally from, obviously, Douglas. Um, family moved over here probably about 50 years ago. Um, Great granddad found this place for some reason, no idea. In the middle of the RSC. Um, yeah. Raised by foster parents for the first two, three years of my life. Um, parents couldn't look after me because they had the Chinese to look after. They ran a successful business in Castletown, so which is great. High school, Castle Russian. I'm a southerner, basically. <laughs> of course. Yeah, so, you can yeah. hear it. <laughs> um, so I was always into sports, um, all the all in the uh, high school teams, doing all sports, rugby, football, athletics. Um, swimming, basketball, so um, found my way through. Um, what, what was your particular favourite? Favourite probably, I was more talented in rugby, to be honest, going forward. So if I pursued that, then <clears throat> I could have been played a higher level. But football was more social. All the guys play football. So it's one of those where, um, one, of those, one of those where, it's more of a social thing than anything else. I was less talented, but I enjoyed it. So I don't, I don't suppose back then you were able to, like kids today, have a choice in games of going to a gym that's well appointed? And... Well, back in them days, <clears throat> the gym wasn't really a thing, to be honest. Um, it's more not, football. It's not that long ago. Not long ago, yes. Yeah, probably about 20 years ago, I think, 30 years ago. Um, but gym wasn't really a big thing because um, social media wasn't a big thing as well. Right. So all these like fitness influencers, stuff like that kind of thing, wasn't a thing. So the gym was more for people who were into bodybuilding and the gym thing was probably um, that type of people who go, go to the gym and start building muscle, basically. Um, nowadays, people go to the gym now, it's more of like the healthy lifestyle mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, so they go in there lose weight, build muscle, just live a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Where back in our day, it wasn't really a thing. So okay. time, times have changed. Um, I probably through COVID really and yeah. nothing else. Yeah. So your, um, so your background from, from school, um, you didn't leave school and become a personal trainer right away. No, no. So I left school in 2002, a very long time ago. <laughs> it's, um, not, it's not that long ago. No, so... Um, 
I wanted to go to uni, to be honest. Um, and to study go, what? Study sports science. Yeah. Um, that's the one I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to go to Loughborough University. Um, looked at that, but didn't get the grades. Um, didn't get the grades, so that kind of dream died a bit. Um, so didn't know what to do, really, after school. Um, I kind of, like, uh, worked at my mum and dad's Chinese at a very young age, and I kind of knew I didn't want to do that. I wanted a bit of independence. So I got a job in a local supermarket, uh, ShopRite. Okay. Um, enjoyed that for two years, really. It pays, you know, at that age, 16, 17, you don't know what you, you, don't know what you want to do, basically, through life. You're, tr- you're still trying to figure things out, you know, at that age. Um, so I spent two years doing that, then knew that that wasn't a career. It was just a stopgap for, for something else. Then got introduced into this office work um, by one of the guys I play football with. Um, got me an interview at Canada Life and, yeah, the rest is history there, basically. So I spent nine years at Canada Life. Right. Um, got as high as I can, really. Um, it was a tough start because it was new to the industry. Didn't know the industry at all, the financial industry, yeah. um, life insurance and stuff like that. Um, but... Once I got my teeth into it, um, I grew as a person in that industry um, to the point where I got seconded out to Dublin, which was my biggest break in the office scene, I think. Um, so I did my stint there, and that's where the personal training came from. It happens due to... I was in the gym anyway. I was playing football for Russian, and I was in the, I was a bit of a gym head previously before being a personal trainer um was lifting weights heavy as i can that kind of thing that's, that's more me thing the boys like were playing football that kind of thing i was okay at football wasn't the greatest so i kind of like moved away from football a little bit and started training all through due to trying to look better as a person you know like lads holidays to ib for stuff like kind of thing so you want to get you know, in shape for that. So I kind of like got lifting and I started at Nautilus and a cherry orchard as well. Um, so Nautilus was the biggest breakthrough for me because there's more equipment, more weights and stuff. But um, didn't know the techniques, didn't know what I was doing. How did you figure out how to use the machines? I mean, when you go along and there's, there's still the machines in, in, in our gym, you know, at least that I don't know how they work. And fortunately you set them up for me, but... How did you learn how to do it? Um, it's more through YouTube, basically. Um, just Googled YouTube, um, put all the exercises in that uh, YouTube and just watched the videos and try and practice it, really, mm-hmm. going forward. Um, I kind of knew some movements. I don't know whether that's just a natural ability or whatnot. Um, but, yeah, going back to the gym, um, yeah, I was just, like, lifting. I was ego lifting, so lifting heavy weights, didn't know the technique, Stuff like that. Ego lifting. Ego. Ego, ego lifting. lifting. Ego lifting. <laughs> right. So lifting lots of heavy weights with bad technique, basically. Trying to show <laughs> off like, against the people who were training next to me, that kind of thing. The most important part was the nutrition part. <clears throat> Did not get that at all. So, you know, being a you know, mid twenties, eating the wrong foods, fast food, stuff like kind of thing, eat Mackey's, KFC, did the lot, basically. Doesn't really matter then, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. But at the same time, I was like building muscle, but at the same time gaining fat. So I was like stocky fat, basically, which is probably not a thing, but um, I felt awful because through my football, I felt sluggish as well, like kind of thing on the pitch. I suppose you're heavier, the bigger yeah. muscles you have as well. Yeah. So the thing that I need to sort myself out was when I – Flew away to Dublin, um, sat down in my car and to put my seatbelt on, looked down. It's like, I've got a belly here. It's like, what's going on? Where's this come from? That's probably due to bad food, basically, you know, fast food and stuff like that. You know, I love my crisps, for instance. Um, so I kind of knew and just sort myself out. Um, Anyone who knows Jewin, by the way, will know that he's never, ever had a belly. <laughs> well, not, not in the last 10 years, anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I flew away and uh, fortunately, um, the office in Blackrock in Dublin. Um, there's a personal training gym mm-hmm. around the corner. So I just popped in and they sold me a 12-week course, basically, and I bought that. And 12 weeks of learning, good training and good nutrition 
my body transformed into a leaner, muscular version of myself going forward. So I learned a lot from my old personal training in Dublin, um, so which kind of helped. Um, so a bit of a light bulb moment for you? It, it was, but the career thing wasn't a thing. It was more of like I did my transformation. Then once that was done, then my Dublin gig kind of finished. So I went back to my old job. However, when I went back to my old job, it was a completely different department. Um, it was the same department, but different employees. So um, stuff was like left behind. And I took a lot of responsibility of like cleaning the backlogs and stuff at work in the office um, to the point where I got frustrated and feel, feels like I wasn't getting nowhere. And it feels like my time in the office was almost over. That part of my chapter was done, basically. Then one night, um, <clears throat> a Facebook advertisement came up and it says 12-week course, I think it's 12-week, oh, six-week course to be, become a personal trainer. Then that's the light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. I thought, all right, I might try something different here. So I went to do that in Liverpool. Um, it kind of fell into place, had a place to stay. The course was literally around the corner from where I stayed. And those six weeks were stressful, also enjoyable, because I kind of found, my, found myself and um, found myself. Um, previously, I was like quite a shy person, you know, um, not struggling to speak to new people, that kind of thing. It's one of those where I didn't want to speak to new people, kind of thing. Mm. I was in the office doing my own thing, yeah. got my group of mates, that kind of thing. So, um, once I got to that course, right, I was like, I don't know anyone here, so I can be myself, like, kind of thing. And I kind of, like, opened up mm -hmm. um, to be my proper self, you know. Um, meeting new people was the hardest thing for me. Um, so, yeah, so that course was done, basically. Then after that, it was back to the office for a bit because I knew that I couldn't support myself being, becoming a brand-new PT back on the island. Were you still living at home back then as well, or...? I was... No, I was living with the boys. Oh, OK. So I moved out by then. Right. Um, <clears throat> so I moved out by then, so I, I knew that I needed to earn some money to pay rent, bills and stuff like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So went back to the office, which was friends' problem this time, and spent two and a half years, I think, enjoyed it, um, because it was a stable income, but to the point where near the end... It happened the same thing as kind of life where I took a bit more responsibility, which I didn't want, while building this personal training um, business up. So got to the point where the summer I thought, right, got enough clients and right, I'm ready to go with the full-time PT. So what, what year was that? Um, 2013 it was. And did that coincide with the opening of yes. Elite? <clears throat> so I approached... Um, Stefan and Kevin before I went on the course um, to say that, right, I want to become a personal trainer in this gym, Elite Fitness. And they say, yeah. So went over, did the course, came back, then pretty much grateful for the guys to give me that opportunity to do my training mm -hmm. in their gym, basically. So 10 years on and moving forward, basically. Yeah. And a new gym as well. What do you think about that? New gym's good. Yeah. Obviously, still improvements need to be made. Um, much better. Oh, Bigger yeah. space, more equipment. Yeah. Um, bit more warmer. <laughs> um, so, yeah, wearing less layers. Well, same layers, actually. But, yeah, can't wait for the summer, really, to see um, what it'll look like, especially when it's fully completed, when the cafe's finished and stuff like that kind of thing. People start using the cafe part as well. Yeah, like. I think so. we're all looking forward to that. Yeah, brilliant. So... What would you say then um, for you was the, was the best thing about becoming a personal trainer? Best thing about being, becoming a personal trainer is probably changing people's lives. Because um, at the start, I was struggling to, not struggling, just more of like get clients, obviously. Um, I had this one breakthrough client, I think, that kind of exploded me into the scene where I had Catherine, she had a baby basically, and her body shape was all over the place. Um, well, having a baby does seem to have an effect on ladies, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, like, one side of her hip was, like, you can tell, had a lot of fat, basically. That's when she held the baby, basically. So it's mm. one side's lopsided. 
So I kind of made up a training plan and diet plan to sort that out. Right. So within 12 weeks, it kind of like smoothed out. It's got a flat stomach, better body, lost a bit of weight, lost a bit of body fat, that kind of thing. And post on social media, then after that, get inquiries left, right and centre, basically. Oh, so that's, that's kind of like my breakthrough client. Yeah, and 10 years ago as well, social media wasn't quite as prevalent as it is, it is, it is no. now. So social media is a powerful tool, massive tool mm. for a business. But obviously nowadays now, it's quite oversaturated. Mm. Um, but at the start, if you're in it quickly, you can, you mm. know, go big. Is yeah. The one. yeah, yeah, yeah. All the pivotal moments for All you. All the achievements, probably photo shoots and stuff as well I've done. Um, so I did like three or four photo shoots. The first one's nerve wracking. Didn't know what to expect, kind of thing. We kind of got a plan to get there. We, we stuck to the plan, and the outcome was pleasing. Was the one and um, was good. The, the latest one was particularly pleasing, wasn't it? When you won a world title, or you just very, yeah, very modest and that, hiding that under yeah. a bushel, really. From personal achievements, um, yeah, stepping on stage for the first time was daunting. We'll share some photographs. Honestly, viewers, we will, we will share photographs of this on... Uh... Um, it, yeah, it was very daunting. Um, asked me five years ago, six years ago, six years ago, I said, no chance. No chance I would be doing that. Um, did a photo shoot um, seven years ago, eight years ago, I think. Um, my first one, and that was daunting as well. I learned a lot from that going forward. But obviously, the next step from a photo shoot is stepping on stage. Now... That um, project was tough. It was seven months of literally hard prep, that was. Um, you've got to be dedicated to that and sacrifice as well. Like, yeah, I, I watched the Arnold Schwarzenegger um, documentary on, I think, is it Amazon Prime it was on? and Netflix it is. Was it Netflix? Yeah, it's Netflix. So, uh, but saw the, the hard work he put in, but it's fair to say that he, like most of the other top competitors in, in that particular sphere, took drugs. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you don't approve of that sort of thing and you went completely clean. Mm -hmm. I don't disapprove it, you know. Um, it's one of those where the bodybuilding scene, yes, in order to compete at the highest level, you have to be on some sort of PED, which is perform performance-enhancing drug, steroids basically, or gear as most people call it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm not against it. I'm not for it. Um, but I'm against it when people use it that don't step on stage. If they use it purely for vanity reasons, then that's just stupid because you don't know what that steroid's doing to your body. Yeah. Yes, it's you make, get, you make gains, you make look good. However, internally, what's it, what's it doing inside? Yeah, yeah, I know that Schwarzenegger was very kind of, to define defined about how they used it they were they were under medical supervision all the time mm -hmm. yeah so well, i'm glad you don't i don't think it's good no. for you so i did i kept it completely clean to be honest well, well um, done yeah i kept it com completely clean just to see my genetics can they hold can they grow towards the biggest competitors out there well i wouldn't say big, biggest competitors it's more of like do i stand in that field yeah. which clearly I won that yeah. fitness model show, which is great. Um, but will I do it again? That's another question. Would you do it again? Don't know. Don't know. Because I've got a taste for it. However, can I survive another year's prep? That's a sacrifice that itself. Yeah. I could see the training you were having to put in. How, what was what was it like? You were having to walk sixteen thousand steps. Sixteen thousand steps plus car, plus stairmaster. Yeah, do fasted cardio like forty five. Near the end it was like forty five minutes fasted cardio. Sixteen thousand steps. Six lit, six liters of water. Carbs are dropped. Calories are dropped. It's like near the end. You know, I got a bit aggy <laughs> near the end. Um, a bit angry. <laughs> I kept it sane for a long, long time. But to the point where when you the only um, positive I can get out of that is you see your body change week in, week out. However, to the point where when you get very, very, very lean, you do look a bit ill, to be honest. So it was not a good look. Um, I'll probably say three, four days before the show, I was the leanest ever. Mm. Probably got 
four, five, six percent body fat, maybe. Oh my goodness, that's like Tour de France rider kind of. Yeah, it was. It was. It was very, very. I was yeah. very, very lean. Yeah. But obviously, come to the show, then you carve up, then mm. you blow up, then basically, then you look better. Right. Um. But like two, three days before the show, I looked very lean. I looked ill, to be honest. Um. It's and the mental side of things, your mental health does take a kicking, to be honest, because everything. Like breaks you, and anything small you get. I tell looking you looking angry. at your face, <laughs> you get angry about everything, like kind of thing. Uh-huh. It's not great. Yeah, I think it? it's called hangry. It's called hangry because you're hungry all the time, yeah. basically. Yes. Um. So yeah, yeah, that was. Parents know this one well. It's yeah. when your kids get cranky. Yeah. Mm. So that was a great great achievement uh, last year. So what I do again? Who knows? Right. Who knows? But afterwards, you had to follow a fairly disciplined regime, from what I understand. I did, but I kind of blew it because <laughs> I went to Dubai right. um, afterwards, really. And God's honest truth, I just couldn't stop putting food in my mouth. I was just that hungry, basically, all the time. Just all those... Uh, Been starving for six good, months. All those good food that you've missed. Right. It's just like <laughs> times 10, basically, times 100, basically. Yeah. Um, but I, I, brought back, I brought it back under control when I got back to Isle of Man and got back to eating properly going forward um my relationship with food is getting better it wasn't great after the show because i was eating all sorts basically um so now i was like right just best back to basics that's all it is i know you're back eating everything because you posted it on instagram yeah that's what i do isn't it really <laughs> very good well well done for that i mean that's a, a a true accolade you should be very proud of yourself i think we were we all were as your clients so okay so if you don't mind me asking, I mean, primarily, you know, in my day job, I'm a financial planner. Yeah. Right. So what's your earliest memory of money? Um, you no, mentioned it, that you're working in your parents' yeah. shop. Yeah. So I, I think before that, the money thing, um, before that, even before the shop when I was working, was probably around about um, 11, 10 years old because... Um, my granddad, <laughs> big gambler, big gambler into the sources, basically. Um, every time he wins, we get money. Huh? Yeah, we get like a bit of short change kind of thing. Nice. So, um, yeah, that's probably the first time. What I, did like, you do with it? Spent it on sweets and chocolate and stuff, that kind of thing. <laughs> and down at the newspaper shop down the road. Um, so that's probably the first grasp of money, basically. Um, but do you think you get your work ethic from having seen your mum and dad having to yeah. work so hard? Yeah, we I did because it was we get pocket money when we help out as a kid, like peeling prawns and chopping onions and stuff like that kind of thing. So like a Sunday afternoon, nothing to do, go downstairs in the Chinese and pop peeling prawns for a tenner, basically. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of worked. Um, kind of start work at a young age, basically. Mm. Just helping out, just helping out the family, really, than anything else. Yeah. Um, we there was nothing new to us, really. No. And how's that shaped you today? Would you say? Um, I, I can still see you still got ethic, the work ethic. Work ethic is driven mm. by the parents, basically. Um, I don't like not working. Simple as that. Um, if I win a million pounds, two million pounds, and a lottery, I'll still be working. Um, because that's all I, that's all I do. I got that work ethic in me. That's purpose. It's like your purpose to life. You want to do some basic. Yes, I like to travel and do things and relax at the same time. But for me, at the forefront is working, and that's obviously driven by the parents. Mm. So they worked. They worked hard in that Chinese. They're retired now, which is um, very um, deserving, I'd say, because mm. they worked hard to the point where. Um, I didn't even see my family, to be honest, because when I was at school, um, they're at work, and when I come home, when I was at school, they're at home. So I rarely saw my mum and dad, really. Mm. So which left my nan to look after us, and me and my three sisters, basically. Mm. Um, so communication at that time was quite hard, um, but I knew that they were working to support our lives, basically. Um, lucky enough, the Chinese was successful, and a very popular place. Um, so, yeah, mum and dad worked hard and that work ethic came from them. 
Mm. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that answer. Um, so of all the things you've done so far, what's given you the most fulfilment, would you say? Um, I'm going to guess the sense of achievement was winning it was, the competition. But I think my sense of achievement will be becoming a PT in the first place. Because if I stayed in the office, God as well, I'd be, to be honest. If I stayed in the office, I'd probably... It's not a dead-end job, really. It's more of like, I'm going nowhere for my life. In order to me to succeed in the office will be like the next promotion, the next promotion, the next promotion. Um, so obviously to the point where you just can't... I just couldn't get any higher in the office. Could have moved, but I just didn't. So with the PT stuff... Um, being self-employed, um, being an entrepreneur, as they say. Um, that's given me freedom of time, basically. Freedom of time, have my own hours, can take my time off whenever I want, basically, without anyone telling me what to do, basically. Um, passing that course was probably my biggest sense of achievement. And also um, discovering myself as well. Um, meeting all these new clients I never dreamed of meeting all these new clients so even talking to people these new clients the biggest achievement apart from the photo shoots um, the stepping on stage the, my first girl client um, with the baby stuff um, actually it was this girl I had when she was 14 um, she came to me with back, is- back issues so I got to know her basically um, but throughout time, I um, remember one day she came to me about three or four years later. Um, she failed at school. Not failed, just more of like she didn't get the grades at school that she wanted mm. and she was lost in life, basically. So I kind of like guarded her through life. I'm not being a life coach like I but it sounds like I'm a life coach. But I kind of guarded her to, um, through adulthood, to be honest, mm-hmm. to the point where she's graduated and becomes a nurse at the moment. So that's like my job done then. Yeah. So I've kind of guided the 14 year old girl to a, I think she's 21 now or 22, to a fully fledged adult with a proper job now, that kind of thing. So in that time scale, I kind of like pushed her on through life. So that that's probably my biggest sense of achievement. And she probably should, she probably know who she is basically. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, that's probably my biggest achievement basically. Oh, that's good. Well, changing people's lives. Changing people's lives. That's the biggest one. Doesn't get doesn't get any better yeah. than that, does so it? So the PT stuff, yes, is great. As in, like body changing stuff, like kind of thing, lose weight, gain fat, and stuff like that. But my the biggest one is more of like confidence in life. You know, where you going with life, like kind of thing. You got someone to talk to in the gym. Yeah. So that hour <laughs> is between me and that person. Yeah. What's said in the gym stays in the gym. What goes? Yeah. <laughs> So it's one of those where um, it's not just personal training, it's the everything else with it. Yeah. You know, I've trained married couples, divorced couples, girl problems, boy problems, you know, breakups and stuff like that kind of thing. So it's just, yeah, I've had it all. And, yeah, I'm ready to give more out over the next 10 years or more, maybe. Uh, it's great. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. And saying you are an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and a business owner. Yeah. What's your number one tip for anybody who's aspiring in that direction? And never give up. Never give up your dreams. Um, I almost gave up through COVID. COVID was a tough time. You that were was brilliant in COVID. I was, but at the same time, it was just my mental health took a right okay. kicking. Well, okay. But as your client, um, those videos that you did, they kept our sanity. So for the benefit of the listeners, I'll tell you what June did. He recorded personal training videos of him in his backyard doing doing exercises and did personalised programmes for everyone. So we had a session to coincide when we would have had our session, which I then got my son to do, and that got him into to, to fitness. I mean, it, that changed his life fundamentally, and, and it kept us sane. It was brilliant. So... Big pat on the back to you for that. I'm no, sorry about your mental health, but... You know, no, uh, you, yeah, that, that, that was a stressful time. Yeah. That was like, I thought my business was over. I'm not going to lie. I thought my business was over. COVID, we didn't know what was, no. what not, like kind of thing. So no, I remember the chutting the gym. I think we were the last people in there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I thought my business was over. I was about to give up to you when I was thinking about it. But um, I kind of knew, right, I had to settle down. And one Sunday, right, got no notepad out, 
and written down, right, what's plan B, what's mm. plan C, what's plan D, yeah. basically. So plan B, obviously, was those videos. Um, so I kind of moved on to so-called online coaching, um, which is a big thing now, big, mm. big thing now. Um, so I did a bit of online coaching for you guys, basically with all those videos, um, which kind of kept my business running. Then, yeah, the moment you give up, then the moment you've lost your dream, you've lost your, you've lost your goals, that kind of thing. So, so you took your own advice, definitely. Yeah. So I never give up about anything. You, know, you want to fight for something, you go and get it, basically. Mm. Ah, that's good. Um, so, you know, if you're losing your job or, you know, having a stressful time at home, that kind of thing, just never give up, yeah. basically. One of those where you can throw out many words, that kind of thing. If you give up, then what's the point of living? We've only got one life in this world. Make the most of it, basically. You're so right. So what do you do to relax when you're not Relaxing. working? Gymming. <laughs> <laughs> training. That's all I know for now at the moment. But um, yeah, training for me is the biggest one. Obviously, get my music on, zone out, and just literally spend that hour or two by myself and just work hard basically in that yeah and you do I know it sounds I know it sounds doesn't I know it doesn't sound relaxing but it is relaxing for me but there are other parts of me now like exploring like for instance meditation I'm going to try and look into that going forward um also recovery tub as well <laughs> the boys got a recovery tub for Christmas and we're going to use it the boys have been using it. I've so, used it once. So, for the benefit of our listeners who don't know what a, cover, a recovery tub is, what's a recovery tub? It's a tub with ice in it, basically. And water. And it's cut on water. So you jump in that for like three or four minutes. It's like a Wim Hof um, method. You jump into cold water, try and control your breathing, and that will apparently um, improve your mental health. And okay. there's other health benefits to it as well. I'm, going still, I'm still not convinced. But no. anyway. <laughs> cold water, basically. Yeah, cold water, no, no. Um, so that is probably the other one I'm looking into and trying to relax. Um, the other one is I'm trying to read again. That's the one. Um, last time I read was in lockdown, actually. I read there Matthew McConaughey's book um, called Green Lights. Mm. Um, very good book. Um, it's just I took a few bits from that and that actually kept my uh, sanity as well like reading that book through yeah. COVID as well um, all his troubles and positive stuff like kind of thing um, ah, good so yeah back into reading back so what, reading. what do you think are the best things about living in the Isle of Man probably I can call it home I can call it home if I move elsewhere Dubai Hong Kong wherever it is, like, kind of thing. I can always pinpoint that, right, where's my home? It's always going to be Isle of Man. Um, nothing beats the Isle of Man than the summer. You know, the sun, the, the island shines bright when the, the sun's out, especially in the summer, down Port Aaron Beach, going down there with the boys, you know, a few drinks maybe, and um, watching the sunset, that kind of thing. Nothing beats it. Um, the island has got its beauty spots going forward. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's just a peaceful place to live. That's, that's I can call it. Yeah, mostly. <laughs> it is peaceful. So what would you say the main challenges are that the Isle of Man faces? <sighs> this island is modernising. Simple as that. We've had this chat. We have had this chat. We've yeah, had yeah. this chat. It just needs modernising. Um, money needs to be spent elsewhere, especially the public sector. Mm. That needs funding big time. Yeah. The NHS, you know, the lot. Oh, yes. Yeah, that needs improving. The other one is obviously modernising and um, listed buildings, you know, beautiful buildings, but they need to be updated at least. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. You do know. with some single uh, single glazed where we are in St. John's Mill needs double glazing, but uh, planners insisted at the time that it was renovated with single glazed sash windows. That 20 years later, well, you know, they need a lot of maintenance. But, yeah, there are things like that. So, yeah, so overall, I think the island needs modernising, simple as that. Mm -hmm. You know, it needs to bring up to the 21st century. We're still living in the 1990s at the moment, I think. Yeah. You know, back in the day, like, and all that stuff. Right. Um, this is where, I don't know if it's a fact or not, a lot of kids leaving 
the Iron Man. No, they are for sure. Yeah, you know, because there's, there's the, not a lot of things to do. People who grad, people who graduate university, mm. yeah, for sure. And that there is a big challenge at the moment. Um, Junior Achievement have just launched a um, just the job new website. So nicely mentioned, they launched it this week, uh, and that's to try to attract graduates back to the island. Which you know, you think about it. And also, you got to think about um, opportunity for local companies as well. That kind of thing. I think the government should plow more money into them as well going forward because obviously cost of living is quite expensive these days and we always say let's buy local but unfortunately local is quite expensive these days you know if the government provides more money to local businesses like kind of thing that that, then that might drive the cost down basically so i don't know the financial side of things but you know well i know that buying a house is a challenge for many people buying a first house particularly and you know they're like the uk Probably Isle of Man property prices are you know, too costly. Let's say if you compare to other parts of the world, but you know it's it, it is it's a big haircut for someone to take who is moving from a lower cost jurisdiction like South Africa um, to here. We're having a lot of South African residents. You got any South African clients yet? You've had a couple, I have. You? Yeah, for Wendy, she's a South African. Yeah, previously had Sandra. She's South African. Sarah, back in the day, South African. Yeah. So there's quite a few, actually. Yeah. 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 Very good. Well, um, I don't know what we can do about finding more money for the government to spend because they don't get it from taxes. So. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So I don't know whether we need to raise taxes or not, that kind of thing. So what what have you got planned next? You haven't, you've kept your cards fairly close to your chest about competing again. But... Um, obviously, I'm not competing at the moment. So my current project is a fitness app. So me and David, my business partner, this has been going on for a couple of years now, to be honest. Um, he's the coder. I'm going to try and market it once it's done. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's the coder. He's taking his time at the moment, to be honest. We want to make it perfect. But at the same time, we can't make it perfect because version one, two, three, four will be evolving through the time. Sure. Um, Is it building on from what you did during COVID, really? Yeah, that kind of like kickstarted it basically because I knew that um, going forward, looking down the future, do I want to be a PT when I'm time when I'm sixty or seventy? Probably not. Um, so the app, I had that idea pre-COVID actually, just never came to fruition really until I started training David, who's a coder, and he does all that soft software stuff that. Yeah. I don't know what he does. It looks like something like the Matrix when he types his um, laptop, like kind of thing. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, so that's in the pipeline at the moment. Do you um, have a time scale on that? No. I'm trying to push him towards um, end of this year. But um, he's going through the nutrition part, which probably got around about 8 million food items. So we're trying to f- sieve through that, what well, he's trying to sieve through that and um, pick out what's, the required information that we need and trying to locate that onto a database. So at the moment, an update is the database is being built at the moment. So we need to fine tune that first in the background. Then we can have a first draft of a app, hopefully sometime in the spring right. kind of things. So we're close. Yeah. We're close. But at the same time, there's always going to be teething problems no, with these apps. Sure. And with that that much coding, mm-hmm. it's a shame you can't bring some AI into it to help and do that it. That is going to be our key selling point. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. AI technology will be involved in that app somehow, um, but we need the first draft Brilliant. to be... Exciting. Early adopter as always, huh? Yeah. Uh, good. Well, I wish you luck with that. Well, moving on to the final few questions that we ask um, any books you've read, podcasts you listen to regularly? Um, obviously, I read the Matthew McConaughey one. Yeah. Um, but the last book I read was Atomic Habits by James Clear. Right. I think, I think that's him. Um, yes, it is. That's helped me a lot through habits mm. over the few years. Um, it's a good book, actually. Yes. Um, some of my habits have changed from it. Um, so that book is very, very handy if you are... If you have very bad habits, that needs changing, mm-hmm. you know, um, going forward with life, there's all that habits in it yeah. really going forward. Mm-hmm. And that's, that book's really, really good. 
okay. podcasts. Um, I follow this guy called Mike Thurston, um, who's a fitness YouTuber, right? Um, influencer as well. I've um, been following him for a, a good few years now. Yep. Um, so he does a podcast called First Thing First, I think, and all his um, guests are entrepreneurs. Right. So I listen to them, how they um, develop their business, how their business is successful. So I take advice from them as well like going forward and try and apply to my business going forward. So, yeah, he's got a few podcasts as well, that kind of thing, on right. YouTube. Okay, well, we can, for listening. we can reference those in the show notes if you send yeah. them over to us. Um, well, who inspires you? Mum and Dad. Yeah. Um, they inspire me. Yeah. Just free work ethic than anything else. Um, it's been a tough upbringing, obviously. Um, obviously, they didn't see us as, as, as kids because um, they were working most times. The only time we see them is probably Sunday, Monday. That's it. Yeah. Saturday afternoon. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah, I aspire to be them, work hard, and they live a happy life as yeah. well. That's what I want. Oh, that's nice. Happy life. That's lovely. Basically. Do you have a favourite quote? Favourite quote? Not a quote. Um, I've actually written it down here, actually. Um, it's more like seven rules to life. So I put this on social media a few weeks ago, actually. Um, so the first one is let it go. So if it doesn't bother you, that kind of thing, just let it go. Um, number two is uh, ignore them. So the reason why I ignore them is basically um, when I did my PT course, I heard rumours that um, people had doubts of me doing this in the first place um, because I wasn't, like, the extrovert, like, kind of thing, you know, getting people to do my stuff, like, kind of thing. Um, so basically, if, it, if, it, if you have any... People who are against you, just ignore them, basically. Yeah. Good, good for um, good yeah. Number three, give it time. Give it time. You're not going to have all the answers in one day, basically. So just give it time. Number four, don't compare. That's the biggest one. No, oh, it is. Comparability. Yeah. Oof, yeah. Don't compare to other people. You know, people might have their different stages of their lives, like going forward. Social media is the biggest killer for kids these days. They're always trying to compare themselves to others, especially in the fitness world, you know, you get all these weird and wonderful, um, great bodies, you know, on Instagram posts and stuff like that kind of thing. Um, some of their bodies are quite unachievable. Plus also it's one of those, I, first hand, I was in great shape when that show. Two, three days later, I was back to normal basically. <laughs> so I, I doubt that, that, but okay. <laughs> yeah. So don't compare with yeah. other people. The other one is number five, stay calm. Mm. Got to stay calm. The moment you stress, the moment you get angry, that kind of thing, then the whole world will break loose, basically. Just got to stay calm. Number six, it's on you. It's on you. Everything's always on you, basically. You determine the outcome of your life. And the last one, number seven, smile. That's great. I love all that. Just smile, basically. Yeah, yeah. Smile through the good times, bad times, sad times. Smile makes it everything easier and happy. Remember, you and smile. Smile. Yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> smile at the moment. Like, great. That's so, yeah. So, that's, basically, that's just that's really my excellent. Seven, yeah. seven rules to life, basically. I love that. Thanks. Thank you for sharing those. That's great. So, where can people go to learn more about you? People can find me on, obviously, social media. Facebook and Instagram. I noticed a new LinkedIn profile for you. LinkedIn profile. I'm working on that at the moment um, as much as I can. Um, yeah, I've seen some testimonials as well for you. Yes, that's going to be up there as well. Yeah, we must put one on actually. But yeah, I mean, for me, having a personal trainer is it's so central. It's my stress buster. You make me show up at the gym three times a week, tell me to do something I don't want to do, and then I have to do it three times whilst you count to 10 and I pay you. It's <laughs> amazing. No, thank you very much, Stu. And that's no worries. Uh, welcome. Uh, also you can find me on uh, elite fitnesses page. Yes. So if you guys need any help in training, losing weight, doing a photo shoot or just general confidence, that's the main thing. Cause my demographic of clients has completely changed now, you know, um, all these kids, you know, they're all more online training, mm -hmm. which is great. It's more affordable for more them. More affordable for them. Yeah. Um, but for like um, the 
40 plus that's probably my demographic now oh, thank you um so that's more my demographic now so it's one of those where they're probably still new to the gym new right. to the industry like kind of thing also they need to look after their health as well it's easily just to carry on, carry on life um you know sitting at home making tea go to work oh, it's go easy to, to bed, do it's easy to do nothing isn't kind it? Of thing, do yeah. absolutely nothing so yeah. you know also training for the elderly is great for your bone structure and stuff like that kind of thing. It's good for your health, good for your heart. So, yeah. And your smile. And your smile afterwards. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Stuart. I've really enjoyed the podcast today recording with you. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening this far. I hope you found this episode to be valuable. If so, I'd like to ask you for a small favour. Would you please go to Apple Podcasts and leave a five-star review because that's one of the best ways for others to find the series and please send a link to the podcast to three friends or colleagues who know they'll find it helpful. That way we can spread the word about how great a place the Isle of Man is to live and work and help spread some positivity. Thanks again for tuning in and being part of our great community. I'll see you next time. Island Influencers is a fortnightly podcast. Make sure you don't miss the next episode by clicking the follow button on your podcast platform. A big thanks to the producer Catherine Watts from Social Cues and editor Martin Bamford at Bear Content. And thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.